if you've ever asked yourself, what's it going to take to yank that out? How strong is that? And how's it going to fail when it fails? Then stick around, let's do a little experimenting and see what we find. Welcome back to the Engineered Angler. I'm in the shop. We're going to do some experimenting with some screwing eyes and the strength of screwing eyes and we'll talk a little bit about the engineering behind something like this and how you can improve the chances that it'll stay in. So if you're using screw-in hook eyes or even the tie eye in the front of your lure, you really need to start considering how you install them. You can enhance the holding power of this hook just by making some minor changes. But first, let's talk a little bit about some of the other options. To me, the best option you can have for strength is a through wire system. Either a wire that runs straight through, and then maybe you have a, a, a loop wire here that connects everything together. That's a real simple system. It's a little more complex to actually install it. But for bigger lures that are fished for bigger fish, this is really your high strength alternative. Alternatively, if you're uh, casting your lures at a resin or you don't mind doing some carving and some cutting, you can do a shaped harness that is essentially one piece and has an incorporated bent eye at the belly. That's what I normally use, especially for all my uh, cast lures. If this lure body completely fails, you still have your line hooked here and your hooks hooked here. And worst case scenario, the body disappears, everything's in one piece, hopefully nothing else fails. But you, you bring that fish home, right? When you use screwing eyes, you're running a greater risk that you're going to lose the entire shooting match with just one loss. So this is your key screwing eye, right? This one slides, it's gone. This is where you're tying on. I set up a winch hoist in my shop so I can yank on these things and see how they fail. And what I found is that it's really difficult to yank these guys out, especially if you use dense wood and hook eyes that are an inch or greater. But what I did find is when they do fail, they don't pull out, they straighten out. So the eye just straightens out, the line pops off, and it's gone anyway. So for those experiments, I made these little lure mannequins if you will <laughs> they're just blanks they're cut out of uh cypress and they're actually pretty tough uh, I'm, i just screw them in i'm not gluing them what i found is the glue helps a lot to keep them from turning but it really doesn't do much to keep them from yanking out so let's go out to the main shop i'll show you the, the setup that i've got to pull on these guys and i'll show you how they fail okay so let's check it out I uh, apologize, the lighting out here isn't as good as in there. But you can see the ceiling mounted winch and it comes down to a two part snatch block there and then a three part block and tackle that I had to make myself. Uh, and the idea between all this is, is not to add more strength but to slow down the load rate because this, this winch will pull that wire at about two feet a second or a little more and now I can reduce that by about six times. So you can see that it's approximately an inch and a half, almost exactly an inch and a half. That's about 3.8 millimeters. If you haven't seen the video on the build of this, you should check it out. I'll put a link right above me. I'm gonna go ahead and attach it to the machine and we'll see what happens. Hopefully, we'll be able to capture the actual load where, where it actually failed. Let's see how it happens. So, again, you can see that that hook failed pretty miserably. Uh, you know, you got plenty of holding power in the wood. It's the actual hook that fails. So how do you resolve that? Well, you need an eye that doesn't have an opening. A full length twisted hook eye that doesn't have screw threads, but has the twists. So what I'm talking about is something like this. 
These I twist myself. If you haven't seen the video of making these, you should probably watch it. I've got a, like a, a relatively unique technique. But I'm going to use this as if it were a screw-in eye. Okay, so what we're going to do is kind of a double experiment. First, we're going to see how well just that twisted screw eye will hold without any glue. We'll see how we can improve the holding power by making a slight change of how we install them. Let me show you what I mean. I've got two of these carved test blanks. And you can see, if you look close, you can see that I actually matched the grain so the wood is exactly the same. It's off of the same piece of wood. It's, the grain is the same. So I'm trying to reduce the variables that, would, uh, that might change the result of the test. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take these things out and then I'm going to install them in two different ways. One, the typical one, which is uh, probably the least best. So the typical way people usually put them in is to go straight in, right? You've got your screw eye in here and a screw eye in here. And what you have is screw eyes that are aligned and parallel to each other. That's the least strong way to do it. And, and if you've ever pulled a nail from a piece of wood, you know that if you can pull it straight by wedging a piece of wood under your, your claws on your hammer, that it comes out easy. If you've got it twisted to one side, it's a lot harder to get out. This would be pulling straight out. So what I recommend, and this is what I do, you can place your eye in exactly the same spot, but you modify the angle you, you put it in on. So instead of parallel to the body, you put it on a little bit of a slight angle up. And then you do the same with the back one. What you end up with is an angle offset each other, and when the load goes on, it's pulling on an angle. And it enhances the friction inside the body. This is really important if you use these homemade twist eyes. So if you take a close look, I've already drawn a line on this. That's how I drilled the pilot holes for this particular body. And then for this one, you can see how it's offset. It's got an angle going up and an angle going up from the back. If you're going to start doing this, if you hadn't done it, haven't done it before, don't make this mistake. Don't put one angled up and then one angled down. What that does is it still you still have these two parallel. Now they're not aligned, but they're parallel. This is better than that, but not as good as having them both angled up or both angled down. Okay, so I'm going to pull these screw eyes out and I'm going to screw these in. I'm not going to put any glue on them. I'm just going to drive them in as if they were screws. Okay, so here are the results. I actually did three tests with each one and it was a major pain in the behind. <laughs> Much more difficult than I thought it was going to be, but I got some results because you can't just have one data point because it's not worth anything. So, the average for the inline parallel was 29 pounds. The average for the off uh, angled one was 49 pounds. That's 20 pound difference. That's a 70% increase in strength. So I think it's worth it. Uh, that's the way I do mine. I glue them in with uh, super glue that densifies the wood and it adheres it to the wood. It doesn't turn and it won't pull out. So, so hopefully that's helpful uh, and answer some of the questions you had. So if you're using the twist in ones that have the open eye, uh, likely the failure mode is going to be for that eye to just open up on you. Uh, I don't recommend using those guys. And uh, I wouldn't really recommend this either. I would prefer to use a through wire for anything big. Uh, if you're fishing anything other than fresh water for bass, uh, if you're out there in salt water, you never know what you can hook up on. So I would use, and I do use, a through wire. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful to somebody. If you haven't subscribed, certainly subscribe. If you got something you'd really like me to test, hey, let me know. Maybe I, I can do it. If you got buddies who are interested in this kind of thing, share um, and uh, certainly comment. Well, I'm heading out to the lake to do a little bass fishing. So I'll catch you on the next video. Mm -hmm.